in the read meetup, y'all. And, you know, off the break, they stopped talking about business stuff and everything. Um, And then, yeah, Marie just springs it on her. Um, Yeah, Cedric and I. And Elsie was like, wait a minute, Cedric and who? And I'm like, girl, right? Because the last time we heard, honey, y'all was over there dumping all his clothes out on his porch at night. Okay? And I'm just like, what? How can you continue to allow somebody back in who is doing all of this stuff? I've never been able to understand that, y'all. Even in my 20s, okay? With my baby daddy. If you keep taking me through shit, I got a roll. I cannot do this because, y'all, that's the thing. I was not raised in a bunch of catastrophe. I just wasn't. So if you don't see that shit going on every day, then the shit is fucked up and formed when somebody tries to give it to you. You understand? So I just, I, I can't do it. And I don't see how somebody keep inviting all this catastrophe and bullshit into their life. And this is how you live day to day. No wonder y'all bitches be coming to work all fucked up and mean. Oh, no wonder bitches be out in the street of customer service being all fucked up towards people because y'all whole life is fucked up. And then y'all going around treating other people fucked up because your life is fucked up in the house. Like, ugh, like I, I just can't do it, child. And I swear, if anything happened with me and my husband and I got to be back out here with this bullshit, I won't be back out here with this bullshit. Sassy is fine by herself. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand how people can continue to keep doing this bullshit and allowing people to come back in. And then on top of that, bitch, you think I'm stupid? Like, do you think I'm stupid? And I would have just been annoyed off of that for that reason alone. So... Kudos to Maria if this was the fuck she wanna do. And Essie was like, the nigga toxic. And he is. I just, you can't, it, it's nothing you can do when a bitch don't care and they want a half a man. They don't give a damn. They just want somebody coming. They don't care about nothing the nigga take up there. They just want somebody in their bed or in their house or, or to say that they got a nigga. That's all it is. She's telling Essie, yeah, me and Cedric met up in Mississippi because, you know, he knew of some facilities that, you know, I'm trying to open a methadone clinic. He knew five facilities or something that I probably would like or something like that. Girl, you got to cut it off all the way. Like, fuck. He going to call and say dumb shit that he know you want. You got to be like, nah. Like, change your number. Do something, girl. Like, and then on top of that, girl, did you get him the Rolex yet? Because we remember that from last episode or two episodes ago. You know what I'm saying? That you said that he said you need to buy him a Rolex because that's what you was doing in the merch. He's not even concerned with getting back with you, getting back into the merch. He said that's what you was doing in the merch. So with my Rolex? Like... Girl, we got to get off of Marie because I just get pissed off at Marie. I love Marie, but then I don't like her. I love her, then I don't like her. Like, she do too much anyway. So, we got to discuss Tamara and her grandmother. Tamara and her um grandmother are really close, were really close. But, um, and she basically said her grandmother, she used to live with her when she was little. Like, she basically raised her. They were really close in her teens up until high school, like, all throughout her life. And her grandmother passed when she was recovering from her fibroid surgery. And Tamara feels awful about it. She feels some guilt there because um, she didn't see her grandmother and help her out with what she was going through. And yeah, that thing where somebody passes y'all and you didn't get the last words with them. You know, and all you have is the last memory to hold on um about them you know and Tamara's struggling with that and i feel for her because like i said that's all our worst nightmares for a loved one to die and you not get that last conversation but can we really if we think about it child does it really ever go the way that we want it it doesn't go like that you know what i'm saying and what we want it like that like, would you want to see somebody and say, you know what, this is going to be the last time we see each other. And I just want you, you would not even let that person go out of your sight. You know what I'm saying? You you wouldn't let it happen. And so that's the reason why it just, it's always going to be like that thing where, you know, damn, that was the last time I saw her. That was the last time I seen her because that's how it goes. You know what I'm saying? I hope she recovers from her the pain of her grandmother's loss because Tamara has a nice heart and I just don't like seeing her like that. You know what I'm saying? She's a nice, upbeat person and um, I feel for her because when my grandmother died, I was really hurt. Like, really, really hurt. And the one thing that I did get from my grandmother, okay, because my grandmother has like probably about 12 to 13 grandkids. Probably eight of them are girls. Probably more than that. And I was the one grandchild, y'all, that got her 60-year ring. Look at that. My grandmother and grandfather, y'all, was married for 60 years, okay? It might have been 65. 
But um, yeah, and right when she was getting ready to go through her dementia, like when she could like start, when she was actually starting to forget stuff, she grabbed my hand and took me in her room and was like, look, I want you to have this because I believe in your marriage, you know, and um, I have no use for it anymore. This is what grandma said to me, and it just rocked my funky joint, y'all. Every time I think about it on so many different levels, like for her to choose me, you know, out of all of her granddaughters, first of all, I'm probably like the only one married out of probably eight granddaughters, me and my sister, oh, and my cousin. But the thing about me and my marriage, my grandmother saw something special is what she said, you know, and I always would hold on to that. And yeah, I just, I said a speech at her um, funeral and everything where I just, you know, I love my grandma and everything, but the way that she was left on this earth with my grand from my grandfather dying before her, I did not envy my grandmother. You know, I did not want to be her in that moment with giving her wet and ring away and telling me, you know, I see real love in you and somebody else. Or I just, I, I was glad for myself, but I was just like, damn, grandma, your love has gone on. And like she said, she no longer needed to wear the ring. And it was sad. It was bittersweet, you know, but I hold on to this because this is my grandmother's ring and I got a piece of her. You know what I'm saying? Always. And I, I'm just like joyous and happy to even have a job. But yeah, y'all, let's move on because I can see and talk for days with y'all about this, okay? Um, yeah, I'm special to my grandmother, honey, okay? Hey, everybody, it's your girl, Sassy Sean Tease. I'm coming back with another video. Yes, honey, back with another one, girl. Y'all get into this episode of Veil Collective, okay? Y'all, the episode, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, that, um, that's my girl. I was on your side at first, but yeah, at the end, no, honey, you did too much. And I was a little bit afraid, okay? Um, for Tamara, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, y'all, let's get into it. Um, the episode starts off with Letitia, um, inviting Marie out for a spa day, okay? So the spa day consists of basically, you know, detoxing your pussy, okay? We're going to steam our pussies on this bedside commode, honey, okay? Because that's basically what it was. It was a bedside commode, a bariatric bedside commode. You know, y'all know I'm an occupational therapist, and I use these type of things. I recommend these type of things all the time. For somebody who can't transfer to the bathroom, and they can just get up and go right there by their bedside. So, yeah, I was just like, okay, and it's literally a bucket with, like, this platform that you can sit on, you know? So, and then when I saw, too, it was, like, what they had on the toilet, on the bucket, a washcloth, and I guess that's where the pussy go, to put your pussy on there, and it stings up with the hot water rising up. I'm just like, girl. Now, that's okay if y'all want to do that, because that's what they've been doing on Housewives of Atlanta. Um, I've seen it on Basketball Wives. This is what the girls are doing, okay? And, uh, yeah, I just couldn't do it, you know, because, for one thing, those blankets they had across them, I just wasn't here for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how sanitized this is. You know, I know you go to hotels, you wipe off and everything, but ju just for your insides to be stained and them all over a blanket, and how much sanitization do they do? Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like maybe it should be a different type of material because this material was looking like it had no breathing, you know, qualities to it. You know what I'm saying? And maybe, y'all, it should have been like some holes or something in it to allow the stain to come out. But then again, you can't do that because now you got pussy all in the air. You know what I'm saying? Pussy juice all in the air. So, I just, I wouldn't trust it. Then on top of that, I was just looking at Marie like, y'all, and I'm going to put a picture up because Marie, you was all in front of the camera with your legs spread it wide open. It was just like, are you fucking serious? Like, she had her legs spread it wide open. Now, I really don't want a visual of that, but we got that through the blanket. You know what I'm saying? The blanket just draped right over her legs, and I'm just like, okay. Now, at first, I was like, you know, the T-shirt was wrong. You know what I'm saying? But for real, for real, y'all, own was wrong because you could have stood at a different angle or you could have just showed a viewing of her stomach up into her face. Why did you have to give us that angle, girl? We did not need to see that, honey. And I was just like, oh, that is gross. And then for the t should have had, like, if it was me, I would have been like, you know what? I don't know how they going to show me and everything. So I'm going to try to keep my legs closed as I can, you know, at least like in front of me so i won't be looking all like that like ugh, i was like let's girl that's nasty and that's probably how you be up in there with glenn all like ugh, girl that shit look nasty i was not here for it y'all and yeah so letitia asked marie you know how's it been between her and cedric and yeah she basically tell this bitch she didn't gave me some pussy i'm like really marie you gave cedric some pussy like for what you know what I'm saying? and what was the conversation 
Like, how did you even get into that vibe with him? Like, for what? I think he's done so much, you know? But she was just like, you know, she ain't do nothing. That's her story, and she's sticking to it with this big old grin on her face. And yeah, girl, you looking stupid out in these streets because you got this man doing any and everything under the sun. Even you said just this episode that basically he has a job and he travels and he's fucking everybody all over the world. That's what you said. Girl, so how do you let him fuck you too? Okay, so... Maria's being stupid and bitch, we are not in our 20s and 30s no more. And girl, you need to leave it alone. Like, I'm not even gonna spend no time on this because Maria's stupid for going back and sleeping with him. So you said y'all been together for 12 years. He's been committing infidelities for all of those years is what you're saying, you know? And at this point, what's left? There's nothing left. Then on top of that, you tell me he admitted that, you know, um, he's spoiled and he's spoiled rotten. And okay, so what's after that? What's after that? She's satisfied with just him admitting to the shit. But what about doing something about it? He's not going to do anything about it. Just like he carried the dog fuck out of you at your rebirth party. Okay? Like, he just rolled out deuces, bitch, and gave you what you wanted before he left. Y'all, Letitia is telling Marie that, you know, Glenn has been trying to win her back and she just can't settle anymore. And I'm just like, okay, girl. Talking about how it's been peaceful over her mom's house. Girl, he winning you on into, like, they are working on these bitches, okay? And at the end of the day, they just need to don't answer their phone. That's what I said. Don't answer your phone. Don't be available in leadership alone because at the end of the day, he gonna keep on trying. He's a nigga. And he know you're a girl. You have a heart. So at this point, it's on you. You, you gotta make the first move, girl. Okay, and you can't be scared, honey. Okay, you gotta do what you gotta do, girl. The teacher probably think Glenn Chang, girl, that's better than him. Same for Cedric, that's better than him. This is who these niggas are. The teacher, some of them, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Fool me three times, shame on 17 times. Like 17 times. Listen, y'all know when you say 17 times, you are exaggerating. So, bitch, you have taken him back a lot of times. You understand? So, when is enough enough? It's never enough. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have half a man all their life and they're satisfied with it. Girl, damn, that shit move the fuck on. Damn, Maria's telling the teacher, yeah, he's a serial cheater and I just had to move on. I couldn't do it anymore. Okay, but you basically about to try to do it again. See, tomorrow how she a hell of a woman and a bad bitch. Y'all know how we do. Girl, it's not about that. Okay, it's not about that. It's about him and his feelings and what he wants. It's not about none of who you are. It has nothing to do. It could be a whole nother bitch he's doing it to. It has nothing to do with who you are. It has everything to do with the fact that he's a piece of shit. And it's nothing else that you can do about that. Except for leave him in the dust. Because he has needs he needs to fulfill. And until they get fulfilled, yeah, he's not going to be ready. Okay? He may not never be ready. He might be a man that just needs to be a whole. It's like, there are men like that, honey. There are. So Tara and Demond, that's the nigga named Demond, is meeting up with her parents to let, you know, them know the plans that they have as far as what's going on in their relationship. And I'm just, off the break, I was like, why do you have to let your parents know that? You should just do what you need to do as a grown person. But this is the relationship that Tamra has with her parents, and we're all different. You know what I'm saying? Me, I would have did what the fuck I to do. And yeah, this is what she do, and um, I don't need no permission. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need you telling me what to do, because I'm going to do it regardless. Okay, so... This is the thing with me. This is how I am. And I'm just not willing to share like that because I don't need to hear everybody's opinion. But Tamara has this type of relationship with her parents, which is good. So they let them know that um, they're going to try IUI. And that's taking his sperm and placing it into her. Because at this point, the doctor was telling her, you know, with all the fibroid surgeries that she's had, it could be a little tricky, you know. So this is a better way of doing it because she has scar tissue. And so then the father's basically telling him, you know, well, what's after that? What's next? You know, and then his mind is acting as if, you know, he wants to marry and everything. And I was believing it and everything, but I don't know. You've been knowing this nigga for so long, even for, since high school. And now y'all back together and he still seemed like he had some type of reservation towards you and moving towards that next step. I just, I'm not sure for time. And I hope that, you know, um, she gets everything she wants out of Demond. You know, I really do. And I hope it's not, you know, what I'm going to discuss later because I don't want that for Tamara. You know, she waited, like I said, I said this on all of my videos about Tamara. She did it the right way. You know, she waited until she found the man that she wanted to create with, you know, create babies with. And she didn't just 
do whatever she wanted in the moment and she went about it the right way and she saved herself for her husband you know and i just commend her for doing that and i want the best of time and i want it to work out the way that she wants it to go but i'm not sure as far as Dima. i'm not and he seemed suspect to me like the bitch just talked to leticia leticia's interior decorator whoever um, yeah, she just seemed like she had a lot of feelings towards the mom when she was talking about him. She seemed like she was very hurt and it did not seem like she was trying to be conniving or, or, um, start anything. It just seemed like she was talking to Letitia, like, look, I know the mom, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I know the nigga, you know what I'm saying? And it seemed like there is something there, y'all. So I'm really curious to know and see what's going on and i hope they bring her back on the show to tell what's really going on because i don't think that demon is going to and i don't think that he's capable of even answering questions we're all right because you got real smart with that producer at the end with that and that was too much honey that was what y'all we i saw a whole nother thing with him that we're going to discuss later as he lets her know that she talked to the trees you know what i'm saying she snuck and talked to the trees you know, and she was like, oh, yeah, that's real behind my back. That's all the way behind my back. But, yeah, as she just lets her know, you know, she did admit to some of the things, girl, okay, that she had a part in it. And, you know, Marie was real glad and excited. Said she can get over everything. She's not even going to bring this shit up. You know, but at first, I was thinking, bitch, Latrice, she really admit, like, all that type of thing. Like, she didn't give Marie all of that what Essie was trying to give. You understand? But I know she had to pull these bitches back in to be friends. But bitch, she wasn't giving Marie all that like she was sorry and all this shit. But I guess they weren't tripping as long as she admitted she played some part in it. And that's what it was, you know. But it seemed like Marie wanted more than an admission. You know, the, the way that she was phrasing, hell. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like you wanted more than an admission. That's why it looked funny to me. So y'all, Tamara is, um walking up to Akeisha's house and Akeisha is walking to her door with her baby girl and Akeisha opens the door and the baby just off the break starts screaming this bitch came at the door hey hi, hi. y'all know how Tamara do all oh, loud high pitch bitch calm down okay and she is yelling at the top of my oh hi hi scared the dog fuck out the baby the baby is crying Akeisha trying to get her baby together I'm like oh my god and Tamara like oh my god you don't like me you don't like me bitch don't say anything okay because your voice is so fucking annoying y'all and i've been saying that last season and this season but i y'all know i fuck with Tamara, so i'm gonna stop going on her about her little voice because i really do like Tamara. anyway y'all akisha noticed that her baby you know was screaming because you know Tamara's on out that door yelling and you know she was up there trying to calm her baby down and she finally got him calm y'all was like that's embarrassing <laughs> anyway y'all they're sitting on the couch and um yeah Akeisha just lets her know, yeah, that's messed up. Ain't nobody come. You know, they invited her to her son's birthday party. Everybody to her son's birthday party and nobody showed up. Like, nobody, bitch. And I'm just trying to figure out, okay, I just thought about something. I'm going to go with what I thought about first. Um, Bitch, nobody's coming. They don't fuck with you. You rolled out from the brunch. So why should they come? Now, and then somebody said you called somebody ugly. So, bitch, they like, nah, fuck this bitch. So, on top of that, secondly, Akeisha not getting the child that she ain't nobody fucking with her because you know maybe on reality show she thinking well that's what they do right girls throw shade and they still show up before each other functions no bitch oh yeah they like uh-uh we not doing that like and these bitches ain't come for none of the tapings for your son's you know party or anything you know maybe like I said maybe she really thought that they was gonna come regardless Okay, because they're on a reality show. But yeah, they said, no, honey, we're not coming. We don't like you. The teacher said, you know, you act better than, okay? You think everybody is beneath you. You know what I'm saying? So since you just over everybody, won't you stay over there by yourself? <laughs> okay, so yeah, they ain't even come. And she was saying she was, you know, a little salty about it. Because when she invites somebody, she expects them to come. I'm like, oh, okay, girl. Akeisha lets Tamara know, and I told y'all she was going to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? I knew it. This is what reality TV does. You know, they go back and forth with telling each other stuff, being fucking messy to start the storyline. So basically, yeah, Aisha went and told Tamara, yeah, your girl Letitia um, basically told me she knew a female that um, Demond knew, and they're emotionally connected, you know? And Tamara's like, yeah, I just, I don't think that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't think that's true. And she, Tamara's not here for it. Like, she knows her man. And that's not what's going on. She's like, yeah, he knows a lot of people. Okay? I said, ooh, okay, girl. Then she starts to say in her confessional, basically, she a little bit fucked up with Letitia. 
you know, because the teacher didn't come to her, but she didn't really outright and say it, but she did kind of question it, you know, so this is what they do. Tamra, you got to get, you know, with the program, this is how reality TV is. They bounce back and forth out of different bitches' mouth before it get to you, you know, and it ain't no hard feelings. And I was glad, I was so glad, y'all, that Tamra didn't make a situation out of that because when the teacher pulled her to the side at her little brunch at, um... Marie's little birthday thing. Tamara went, ain't feel no type of way about Latrice telling Akeisha about it. You know, she didn't even bring that up. She was being real grown about it and stuck to what the fucking issue was. So I was so glad we because y'all, y'all know that could have went all down here. We would have been stuck two episodes talking about the fact that, oh yeah, Latisha told uh, Akeisha about Tamara's business, you know? So I was glad y'all. So the rebirth party, okay? And yeah, off the break, y'all. So Gucci was so damn hood when she had to go on Essie. Like, y'all, I don't like when people do Essie because Essie means, well, y'all, let me explain something to y'all about Essie. Essie is a grown-ass woman, okay? And yet she might have old-ass wigs and everything. And, you know, she might not be knowing which shirts to pick out and Lane Bryant and everything, girl. But Essie be doing her and she grown as fuck. So all y'all want to come for Essie, okay? <laughs> And be trying to shave the fuck out Essie Lee, Essie alone. And I'm telling y'all right now, it ain't right. And y'all need to stop. So don't do Essie, y'all. Do not do Essie. I don't like it, y'all. So anyway, y'all. So Gucci is up there. Soon she come in. She switch her ass to that. She look real cute. Bitch ugly to me, but she look cute. But she up there switch her ass to that. Some of some, oh, black and gold. And they got these type of colors for a rebirth. And, yeah, it was a little bit of truth in that. You know what I'm saying? I was thinking the exact same thing, y'all. They had, like, a black and gold tablecloth, black and gold balloons and everything. And it was just like, if somebody is a rebirth, rebirthing something, you would think more of pastel colors. You know what I'm saying? Like a baby paint, like a um, baby blue, or like a slight, you know, a uh, 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 light red or something like that. Just something more lighter and dainty, girly and all that. And... Uh, yeah, I wasn't feeling it evil, bitch, but so Gucci, you don't have to say everything you mean, girl, okay? I mean, you know, sassy do that sometimes, y'all, but you don't have to say everything that you mean, girl, so y'all, then she starts to go on, on the picture of Marie and a backdrop, and she says, you know what, that look like somebody from elementary drew, drew that, I see, you know what, <laughs> Why do everybody got to go in on everything around them? And then at the end of the day, y'all, it was, it, it didn't look that good. You know what I'm saying? It looked okay. But once again, Essie did the best that she could. So y'all need to get over her ass. You know what I'm saying? It's not that serious. You know, it looked nice to me, but y'all, when I was blown, when Cedric walked in there, okay? We're going to talk about it. But yeah, y'all, Cedric walked in there and I was not here for it. And Marie looked like she was shocked, you know? And I really don't know why, girl, because he's trying to work back into your life and in your pocket. So Marie and her mom walks in, okay? And, um, yeah, honey, I was like, you know, Marie mother looked really pretty when she walked in. She did not look like the crack user that she is, you know, until she started talking, y'all. And she was high as Cootie Brown. She was high as a kite, okay? And Marie is not embarrassed. She knows that her mother's on drugs and... Yeah, I just felt bad for the mother, you know what I'm saying? Because she was basically saying her eyes were squinched up, y'all. She was high as shit. If y'all did not see this episode, y'all need to go back and watch it. Like, Marie mother was high as fuck. And Marie just still bring her, you know, into her whole little shit. And she loves her mother. Is she embarrassed? No. You know what I'm saying? Is she trying to get her mother help? Yes. And she's telling everybody, you know, because um, she has all of these methadone clinics now. Um, Marie, her daughter, has a methadone clinic. She was like, look, I am really struggling, and I'm hard on this um, dope, and I really need some help, you know? And I could see, girl, you feeling real good right about now, okay? And so, yeah, she was telling everybody she's struggling and everything, and she needs help, and turns to Marie and say, are you going to help me, and I need your help, and give her a hug and everything. And I was here for a job, but at the end of the day, you keep saying the same thing, and you up in your 60s and still fucking getting high, like... Just like Marie said, I don't really know how much I can believe out of your mouth. You understand? Because that's what she did. Next thing you know, because I noticed that that's why I said it. After she hugged her daughter, Marie, she was like, yeah, she going to get her the necessary help. She been trying. You was back at the table. You walked right back over there laughing, uh, 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 high-fiving and all this shit, and all sights about, you know, that she was there or whatever. You was high. 
but you were the same person who y'all said she been to rehab like so many times, like 10 to 15 times. So this woman is never going to get off drugs. It's kind of sort of like Keisha Cole mother. She's one with it. And I think that at this point, Marie mother probably won with it in her head, but need Marie for just to live and to continue to get her drugs, y'all. I'm serious. I don't know. It just reminds me of Keisha Cole Mother. Like, Keisha Cole Mother said, look, uh, honey, okay? I told y'all I'm going to stop. I thought I was going to stop, and I can't stop, and I'm never going to stop. I'm going to die like this, and that's just the fuck it. You know, and I think in Marie's mother's mind, I think she thinks like that. I think she is bullshitting Marie, and this is what she's doing so she can continue to get what she wants because she's living with Marie. And Marie is get y'all know Marie spoiled everybody in her house. The son got three kids by three different bitches, and she take care of all of them and best friends with all the bitches. Okay, she got him up in the college. She's taking care of her, her, him too and his kids and the baby mothers. And she's taking care of Cedric. He's cheating all over. She definitely going to take care of her mother. So it's sweet being in Marie house. You know, so this is what the mother's doing. She's getting treated like a queen and getting everything she wants on the side and still continue to get high. You know, so I just, I don't know how serious um, Marie's mom is and I don't believe it. That's just me. I don't believe it. So y'all, as Latrice put it, yeah, Cedric the Entertainer walks in, okay? I'm like, ooh, girl, damn, she read you down, okay? She, Cedric the Entertainer, yes, and he has entertained Marie for several years with the bullshit. So he is an entertainer. 12 years is what she said, okay? So anyway, Latrice was saying too, you know, basically, oh, I thought she was with her little young boo that she was trying to throw up in my face when she was salty about me, you know, with all that little shit that she said Latrice did to her. I'm like, you did bring, last season, y'all, she brought this little ass boy, I'm saying little ass boy, but he was way younger than Marie, to this function trying to act like she got over Cedric, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, go ahead, Marie, but what happened to Marie, we don't know her. He was too old for her ass, that's what it was. I ain't had no business dating that little younger, and I think he was, you know, easy on the eyes on top of that, like, girl, but you went back to Cedric, like, ugh. You know, and they was just facing him up. You know, acting like he, you know, oh, Cedric is his type of shit. Y'all, Marie face was so excited. She, I never saw this bitch smile that damn hard. It was from ear to, I know people say ear to ear, girl. It was from ear to ear. Yeah. So he was sitting up there, um, all like gazing her eyes, just really like giving it up when he was singing her a song. You know, he's singing a song and I'm just thinking to myself, you old red ass old looking man with this thick ass nappy beard. He just looked, ugh. And I don't know what Marie sings to him, but he was really giving it up and singing her happy birthday and she was loving life on it. She started giving this speech, okay, about how she couldn't take the infidelity, this man, you know, how much he did and, you know, it was just too much for her. Really, she talking to fucking Cedric, but she acting like she having a speech, girl. I, I, I peeped that, Marie. Like, I already, you said exact, I couldn't take no more. The infidelities was too much. And, you know, um, I just would expect him to be there for me. It was, everybody don't need to know all of that. Why were you acting like he was talking to everybody? He was really talking to him. And Cedric ain't give two fucks. This nigga was looking at her like, he just looked like he don't have no emotion for her every time. So she was just saying all this stuff. And, but at the end of the day, Cedric saved my life. I'm like, bitch, saved your life. How did he save your life? So Gucci said in her, in her confession, he was like, saved your life. I was like, right, that's a bit of a stretch. He had some type of magic pill that cured her lupus. Because she's talking about something. Yeah, he hooked me up with a person and gave me this, some type of electromagnetic something, type of medicine. Take her out of her pain, y'all. And it ended up working. She had her pain pills, no narcotics in like a whole week. And like, he just cured shit. Girl, that little, that's the thing. You taking a little ass piece of, of life and acting like he did the world. And he's going to run with it. And you running with him like a dumbass. And now everything that he has done to you means nothing because he did this small ass little piece. Girl, take that medicine and, and still kick his ass to the curb. It's not worth it. And she started telling everybody, like, we stupid. Or, you know what, it's really Marie stupid because it can't, she can't possibly think that we think that, you know, he saved your life. He did not save your life. You would Even if it didn't work, you still would have lived because it, did, it wouldn't have just saved your life. Like, you wasn't on your deathbed with your pain. You would have survived. Like, 
So you just running with that. Like, that's stupid. So Latresha asked Cedric, you know, since he want to be wooing a bitch, okay? Singing to a bitch and all that. Um, yeah, will y'all be renewing your vows, you know? Because that was a lot. Okay, that was a lot. And, yeah, this bitch, Marie, don't even let him ask. It's just a blessing to have everybody together and to be able to communicate and rebuild a situation, a relationship. I'm saying, you know what? You didn't even let him talk and see what he was thinking from that. Because you already know he's not trying to renew no vibe with you. You should have shut up and see what this nigga was going to say. But you didn't. You was off the break trying to cover for him. Because you know that he probably felt awkward in the moment. Like, ugh. No wonder. No wonder. So Cedric turns to Marie, y'all. And he like, you know what? Um, I'm going to continue to be a friend to you. You know? And I want you to have a wonderful birthday. Okay? And gets up. Um, gives her a little smooch or whatever and rolls out, you know, and like as she said, typical Cedric, like typical, and then this nigga proceeded to tear deuces behind his back, like, see y'all later, like, I already did my job here, my job is now done, I came and gave this little bitch a little bit, and she thinks it's a lot, so yeah, I'm done here, okay, and he probably, I don't even know y'all, I'm just guessing, he probably was there all of about a good 20, 30 minutes, okay, so yeah, Marie, you just allowed him back into your life, okay, and now, you know, he's, and he's gonna will you in and he's going to take baby steps into getting in your bedroom and sleeping in your room that's what's going to happen next because you're going for the okie doke and you being stupid oh the girls see him doing that leaving they like oh yeah he definitely look at that it's too high for him it's getting too high for him yeah because Cedric ain't trying to go through all that y'all about to be questioning this nigga and he's not here for none of that so he's going to bro this is what niggas do he don't want no thoughts of none of that he ain't trying to give out no um pretenses as if he want to be with this bitch because he doesn't Okay, and he came for a purpose, and it was for himself to gain her back, you know, bit by bit, and he already served his purpose. Why should he sit there and keep on answering questions, you know, about somebody that he doesn't want to be with? So Tamar lets the girls know, you know, where everybody's gathered, that Akeisha is bothered that nobody showed up to her son's birthday party. And yeah, um, Maria's like, oh, I had a prior engagement. And the teacher lets her know, yeah, um, my hamster died. I said, you know what? <laughs> um yeah we can make all the jokes we want to teach but at the end of the day girl what's going on with Ferris street because you over here talking about how you know um she thinks she better than everybody you know um she said somebody was ugly you one of the girls in y'all group is ugly or whatever this some little ass girl shit and you going in on it talking about your hands to die if you don't want to fuck with this bitch about Fer Ferris street you know, in Ferris Street, y'all supposed to be, it's a million dollar business that y'all supposed to be getting into. And you basically need this bitch because you don't have the, either the permits or the money to build on Ferris Street yourself. So you need this bitch. So I'm trying to figure out what part are you going to be like trying to get back into her life? I, I don't understand what's going on. The last conversation, you said that basically you was acting real pressed to work with this bitch in her face. Asking her, so we still to on with Ferris Street, right? So it was on from there. So... After you heard that she called one of your girlfriends up, he now you dipping out like, I don't understand. You know, and I'm just trying to figure out, like, are you in business with Aikisha or not? Because if you are and you plan to in the future, bitch, I would suggest you, you know, attend any function that she has. That's just common sense. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't understand what she's doing with that. My husband was like, hold on, ain't she supposed to be fucking with them? Yeah, she is. I, was, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Letitia think that this bitch ain't gonna see y'all because whether they know it or not, these people on reality TV, they see it as we're going on. They see these people and their confessionals and they're, them talking about each other and y'all talking about me and all that. I can see that later. So you don't know how this girl is gonna be later when she find out how you're treating her. You know what I'm saying? So maybe Letitia figured that she won't, you know, go be fake to the bitch and everything and be different on camera, bitch. I don't know what you think of Letitia, but a bag is involved. You know what I'm saying? Money is involved and all this, she thinks she better. Let the bitch think she better. You know what I'm saying? And then she thinks one of your friends are ugly. A couple of your friends are ugly, bitch, and it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you're not going to be sacrificing that little high school ass shit for no fucking bag. Like, are you dumb? Because you're trying to act like so much is wrong with our kids, but none of this shit can't compare to the dumb shit that you just did. You basically did not show up of a function that she had and acted as if what she has going on in her life does not matter when you flat out need this bitch. That's the part that doesn't make sense. Letitia pulls Tamara to the side and lets her know, you know, basically she heard it from the girl, her interior decorator. This is the girl that mom supposed to be fucking with. And why I keep doing that? But, um, yeah, she lets her know that she told her they have an emotional connection or something. And she's like, no, Tamara's like, no, that can't be. 
It's no way that that can be. I saw a bunch of texts from her to him, and it was nothing like that. And um, they did have some type of argument or something like that, And but it wasn't nothing. And I'm just like, Tama, what was that about? You know what I'm saying? You said you saw everything. She said she even looked on this stuff before because he showed her. You know how we look at the text. You think, oh, that's the only text you want me to see. So she went further, deeper in, and she was like, she just didn't see none that was suspect. But you did say that they had a fallout, you know, and what was the fallout about? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, what is it about since she's interior decorated? Was it about some walls or some type of um, thing that needed to be fixed in his house? Like, which, what was it? What was the fallout about? Because he, something is there. And at first when Letitia was like really drilling, but she just kept saying, are you sure? Cause you know, he don't come to none of the functions. And he, she was just like, well, we just got back together. Like every time Letitia hit this bitch with something, she had something to say, like, that's not my man. You know, so she's standing firm with him. But, and I was thinking at the time, like, damn, Letitia, you just hating cause been out there being a whore. You know what I'm saying? You just trying to get pull somebody into your little world and bitch, everybody ain't cheating. But at the end of the day, most of the time, everybody is cheating. And then second of all, Letitia just really trying to see because Letitia see how this girl was acting. Like, that's what I said. The bitch came to Letitia like she was hurt, confused, bothered, and some more shit. You know when you hurt from a nigga, this is how she looked. And it looked like the demon hurt her in some type of way. I don't know if it was, it was emotional, physically, or anything, but she seemed hurt by this guy, and it just looked like the truth to me. You know, every time I want to take up for demon, I keep going back to, damn, but this bitch looked bothered, you know? And this is where Letitia kept on drilling her and saying, look, like, are you sure? And, you know, she's like, oh, one thing's certain, two things for sure. He ain't got no attraction, no emotional connection with nobody else. And, you know, she gonna have to send her some receipts. I'm sure receipts are coming down the line. They always do. But right now, the questions are here and we're not questioning this shit for no reason. Like, it's something going on here, y'all. It's something going on. Anyway, y'all, Demon and Tamara meet up at her grandmother's house because they're going to sell her grandma's house. Her parents are selling her grandma's house, but she just go there, I guess, you know, just to reminisce, you know. And Demon is like, wow, I'm used to walking in here smelling food, you know. And Tamara just starts crying. I'm like, damn, that's so sad. Now, when she started crying, he looked like he really, really was trying to console her. He was there for her. He was like, you know, you know, I don't like it when you cry. You know, all of the things, girl, that you're supposed to do when you are mad, y'all. That's why Tamara is not, you know, she's blind, I think. I don't know. Until I get this other girl side, I can't say that Demon is, you know, faithful. I can't do it. Because I keep remembering this girl and how she was. Um, And so, yeah, he just seemed like he was, you know, a nice guy. He's looking out for her feelings and everything. And next thing you know, they're talking about, um, he's saying how, yeah, we got to make a legacy. Our next legacy, I guess, from the grandmother passing, we got to make our legacy. So I guess, you know, the next step and everything. And she like, yeah, you know what that is. Yeah, and she was like, yeah, like my father was basically saying, you know, basically not the, not the baby first and then the child. They need to fucking get married, you know. And so he was like, yeah. And she was like, yeah, you know what you got to do. And he just looked like, yeah, he was kind of resistant. He didn't look excited. He didn't, he wasn't like all in her arms. He wasn't like kissing her, looking her in her eyes. Y'all know when a nigga want to get married. I don't know, but I know my, when mine wanted to get married, he was right there front and center and wanting to be in your face like, yeah, we about to do this thing. You know, and he was just like real reserved, like looking down his whole body language was fucked up like this is something that I don't want to do, you know, and Tamara knows that he don't want to do it the way that she said it, you know, she was like, well, um, and you know what you have to do, like, you pulling him in to do something that he just doesn't want to do, okay, so, yeah, it's some reservation there, like my husband said, some reservation there, as far as him not wanting to do it, and it is what it is, and yes, honey, let's get to the end when the producers ask him, because Tamara asked him first, she was like, um, are you, the ladies are telling me that you emotionally connected to some other female, and he just looked like, his face just hung. He just had to take a step back. Like, my husband was like, damn, the nigga looked like he was about to get punched. Like, he was about to go through something. And that's exactly, y'all gotta watch people's body language, y'all. He looked like he was uncomfortable. You know, like, he couldn't answer the question. And I don't know if he had an emotional connection with this bitch and Tamara. But, yeah, Demon, honey, 
you don't come on reality TV with this bullshit because on top of that, they're going to find out on Instagram, Facebook, somebody is doing research, okay? And they're going to find out if you fucking with somebody and they're going to tag this bitch and let her know. This is what they did for Love and um, Marriage Huntsville, y'all. And it's going to get done. You can't come on reality TV, y'all, thinking that you're going to hide something because it's not going to be hidden. Your secret will be revealed. And bitch is going to come forward and that's just it. So, Tamara, I just hope that she is ready for the drama because... I'm not here for Demar and the way what he's doing. I'm not here for y'all, and this is why because even when she asked him, you know, um, are you emotionally connected? And my husband was like, "Damn, baby, you see that?" When he stepped back and he was looking like, "Damn, he just got robbed." And I was just still in my head like, "Nah, he he probably are." You know, he just nervous about the wedding or he just on camera, you know, making excuses, y'all. But when that producer asked him. You know, do you have an emotional attraction to the girl Tyra? I think her name is Tyra. And I guess the girl maybe Kiki or had a little chuckle in her and shit and laughing. He was like, oh, so you laughing? It's funny. I said, oh, girl. You know, and people want to make fun when, um, to try to shut a nigga up when they take up for their spouse. Because on, um, what was it? Uh, uh, Housewives of Atlanta, one of the girls, the one who, she's a runner. A famous runner, whatever, and her husband. Her husband was getting tired of the ladies pouncing on her, you know. And he stood up and he said, "Look, um, I'm tired of y'all talking to my wife like that. Leave my wife alone." So, um, who was it? And Kenya was telling um, one of the ladies, I forgot her name. She just back on here this season, but she was telling her that, yeah, ooh, I felt threatened by him when he stood up. You know, I just felt threatened as if he was going to attack or something like that. Just doing too much, knowing a nigga ain't thinking about you, bitch. He just told you, leave my wife the hell alone, and you can't understand that. You trying to make him out to look a certain type of way because he just dealt with your ass, bitch, and that's what it is. So, re fast forward to Demond telling the bitch, oh, you laughing? You laughing about it? You think it's funny? Like, that was a direct hit to her. You know what I'm saying? So if that was me, that's two different things with Kenya and um the girl, the, the lady's boyfriend. That's blown up how bitches do. Oh, I feel attacked. I feel like, but when Demon did this bullshit, oh, you think it's funny? Like, I would have been a little bit afraid as a female. You know what I'm saying? Because he seemed like he could get up and, and smack the dog fuck out you because he didn't like something that was said out of your mouth. You know, so that right there time up until right then at that time i was even making excuses for him when my husband was like nah 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 i was even like nah he all right and when i told you do that i said oh and time look afraid she looked like this is the part i don't like this is the person that i don't like she was still trying to smile but time looked like she know how he goes and she know what it is and this is him so yeah i don't, I don't rock with demon like that i really don't and something is going on and yeah we're gonna see and like i said they're gonna research the fuck out your ass honey and it's gonna be known whether you do or not so y'all that is all for this episode i will see you ladies and gents later don't forget to like and subscribe comment y'all because i want to know what y'all think um a lot of people have been commenting i've been trying to comment to everybody i can't get to everybody all the time but I comment, you know, um, most of the time and when I really see fit. So, yeah, y'all. I will see y'all later. Don't forget to subscribe. It costs you nothing, sis. Hit that button. We have fun over here. We rock over here. So, yeah, do that and you'll be good, okay? So, I will see you, ladies and gents, later. Bye.